I don't totally remember who it was, but someone in the comments recently pointed out that this month's Popcross Community Redraw theme of turning vehicles into mech armors is basically just Transformers, and that's a pretty good point. I mean, it's not exactly the same. I'm not taking the vehicles that subscribers submitted and redesigning them into robots that can transform back into those vehicles. I'm taking the vehicles and redesigning them into mech suits for the pilots that were also submitted by people, but, you know, it's kind of semantics, visually speaking, it's going to be very similar to turning those vehicles into Transformers. Also, to try and one-up last month's Community Redra episode where I took your fantasy monsters and redesigned them into suits of armor and had that episode narrated by two of my own original characters, this episode is going to be narrated by three of my own original characters. Good old Benny Schiap, Vasilia Kuznet, and Dr. Champagne McGregor. Might get a little chaotic with all three of them, but let's see what happens. Oh, and as usual, I'm showing off all the other stuff that was submitted as well. Yeah, but let's go. Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Hey, Champ, come here, I want to introduce you to someone. What in the flip is you doing in my apartment? How did you get in here? I got my ways, don't worry about it. Or oh, we'll worry about it. Because there are people out there that want to kill me ever since I so-called betrayed Dr. Universe. So if a clown like you can get in, I'm worried they could too. I'll admit, it was strange we came right into your home without asking. Is not what I would have done myself. But now that we're here, I must say, you seem like somewhat high-strung man. Maybe could use relaxing presents, such as Benjamin here. Who it? Oh, relaxing? I don't think anyone has ever called Benj- Why? Benjamin? Since when do you let anyone call you anything other than Benny? I let you call me clown, don't I? But that's because I know you love me. I don't. Besides, it sounds weird when Silly here calls me Benny. Say it, Vasilia. Benny Sharp. It sounds just wrong, right? But Benjamin, it works a lot better in her accent. Rolls off the tongue a bit better. Benjamin. See? So I'm making an exception. But anyway, was gonna tell Silly here about some of the mech armors I done built, and figured you might want to hear about more of them too. What do you say? I was just... Whatever. Admittedly, I am a little bit curious what happened with the whole Freddy mech bear situation. So, alright, let's hear it. Uh, no, I'll get back to that story later. I'm gonna tell you about some of the different ones I made, unrelated to that. What? Why? You ain't finished that bleating story yet. Just tell me that one. Yeah, but I don't want to have to get silly here caught up on all that. We might as well just start fresh, something you both haven't heard. Like with that steampunk cowboy horse armor I done made for this guy Sean once, who needed a suit to go hunt down a bunch of Wendigos. Wendigos? You have Wendigos here too? Are they same as Wendigos from my universe? You know, big white furry monsters with horns, they haunt Canadian wilderness, this kind of thing? Nah, but, well, first of all, I mean, right now we're in Shamp's dimension, not mine, so I don't know if they got Wendigos here. But in my dimension, we got myths about the kind of Wendigos you're talking about. But the kind of Wendigos that this guy was hunting down was actually just people with some kind of weird zombie virus. And who knows, maybe that got that virus from another dimension too. Oh my god, multiverse stuff is so confusing and stupid. I don't know about calling stupid, but I do admit, can be a bit confusing. Maybe focus on armor, Benjamin. What is this uh, steampunk you speak of? Ah, right, it's sort of like an aesthetic for people that dig old-timey steam engine sort of designs, which you might not know what that is either, but basically he wanted the thing to look a bit more clunky and kind of rusted looking, and as I said, he also wanted it to look a bit like a horse too, that sort of vibe, you know, with the funky legs and whatnot. And he wanted it to shoot fire too. I think that was supposed to be good against hunting down Wendigos or something. Okay, so you're saying this guy wanted a flame-shooting, steampunk, humanoid horse suit to hunt Wendigos that ain't really Wendigos, and you just went along with that, no questions asked. Well, I asked him how much money he had. And was client pleased with suit? What did look like? You have image to show? Oh yeah, sorry. And of course he was happy with it, but here, take a look at this. That is very nice armor, Benjamin. You say you build these with technology, not magic? Magic? You got magic in your dimension? Ah oh, yeah, Vasilia here is from a fantasy sort of universe, you know, with like dragons and stuff. Wow. 
course, but they got dungeons in her universe too? I mean, probably, but the Dungeons and Dragons universe is actually a different universe from hers. Oh, jeez, multiverse nonsense. But anyway, since we're talking about other dimensions again, I could tell you about a suit that I threw together while I was jumping around the multiverse a few months ago. In a sort of sci-fi universe where people got spaceships and stuff, I came across this gal named Hillary Pennywise. Pennywise? Really? This gal wasn't the daughter of some evil space clown that can turn into spiders, was she? I mean, not as far as I know. Certainly didn't come up in conversation, and I'm pretty sure I would have remembered that. What a strangely specific question this is, Mr. Shamp. You know, there is dragon in my universe that resembles Clown Spider. Oh, I, I bet there is. No kidding, you made an armor out of that thing? Of course I have, but we are not here to talk about my armors. Please, Benjamin, go on. Right, right, so this gal was a real rags to riches sort of story. She started with nothing on this lowly sort of planet begging for money, then worked her way up to being loaded and taken down into galactic crime lords in this sweet looking spaceship. She'd even killed this crazy space dragon and mounted the thing's head on a ship. Of course there's a space dragon in this story. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Anyway, the ship got pretty beaten up by some cheeky goon with a photon laser, and she couldn't really fly it no more. That's around the time that I met her. We got the talk in, and I mentioned I could probably retool the thing into a mech armor for her, and she was all for that. Paid me in some weird space credit sort of things that I don't know if I can use them here, but it was still worth it. Ah, you turned Space Vessel into armor. It's like how I turned Monster into armor. And it's like how you're both turning my brain into mush. Was a quick and easy build, because her ship was already pretty advanced. She did have one weird request, though. She wanted a stomach visible through the suit. I says to her, why do you want that? Mech armors are usually pretty, you know, full body covering. But she says she's a real big fan of midriff tops, and says she's got a real nice stomach, and she wants to show it off. Well, that just sounds plain arrogant to me. Oh, please, it's totally understandable. I have clients ask me all the time to keep exposed legs, stomach, hair, arms, or whatever they're proud of. Besides, arrogant is simply term insecure people use to try and bring down confident people to make themselves feel better about lacking self-worth. Wow, well, that just sounds like something a real arrogant person would say. Perhaps, or maybe you just lack self-confidence, which would be strange as Benjamin has told me you are a genius who can literally create living dinosaurs on a whim despite having no powers or magic. This is incredibly impressive. Maybe you could use a bit more arrogance yourself. What are you, what are you complimenting me for? I thought we was arguing here. I am being pleasantly disarming, is method I use to help make sales to even gruffest and surliest clientele, but also works quite well on making people like you more. Is it working? To be honest, yeah, a little bit. In fact, if I was into ladies, I'd probably be stumbling all over myself about now trying to hit on you, but failing miserably, because well, I ain't good at that sort of thing. Further evidence, you could use boost in confidence, you are a very good looking man. Could use clothes without stains, maybe even nice armor, but could easily get women as good looking as myself, if was what you desired, of course. Oh, oh I, I mean, it, it's not, but that, well, thanks. Can, can, what were you saying about the mech armor banning? Can you get back to that? Geez, silly, you gotta teach me how to get them all nervous like that. I almost got jealous over here. Would you, would you just get on with it? Alright, I built her the suit, she dug the look, and here it is. You make armors for people with surprisingly similar missions to myself, Benjamin. Woman who fights dragons, man who hunts wendigos, I find quite interesting. Well, Vasilia, have you ever made armors for a bunch of kids who was trying to take down a serial killer? Cause he is. Really? Those sound like very impressive children. No, you wasn't supposed to be impressed by that. It's irresponsible of him. They're just kids, he should have gotten someone else to handle that. Yeah, maybe, but I mean, I hunted and slayed dragons when I was a small child, even fought a weird jaguar to the death when I was five. There were uh, consequences of this, but I was still successful. Anyway, Benjamin, what are some other people you have made armors for? 
maybe someone unlike in the I would have built for myself. Well, there was this one gal, Shima, who wanted an armor to help her fight global warming. A global... warming? Is this a bad thing? I personally like winter, but most people I know complain about it, so would think people wanted globe to be warm. I mean, I'm all for warmer weather too, but was turning out to be a problem in my world. Icebergs melting and killing polar bears or something. I don't know, I don't really watch the news much, unless my armors are popping up on them. But anyway, this gal brought me specs for this cryobeam thing she wanted to get built, but couldn't get any funding for it. She said if I built it into a suit, she could literally wear the thing and take it up into the atmosphere and cool things down to help protect the planet from getting too hot. She even showed me specs for how the suit could be solar powered and all this crazy stuff. Sounds like she could have just built this thing herself. What'd she need you for? I mean, drawn blueprints and being able to build them into something are pretty different things. Plus, as I said, she didn't have the money for it. She was trying to get some government grants or something, but wasn't getting anywhere with that. Ah, so because of us for a good cause, you built her for free? Very honorable of you, Benjamin. Yeah, I don't buy that for a second, not from a guy who once tried to drown a gopher. I thought you twice tried to drown gopher. Hey, you can all keep hopping on about that gopher, but trust me, if you knew him like I did, you'd be glad I twice tried to drown him, then shot him into another dimension. What? You did what? Never mind. Anyway, I didn't quite do the suit pro bono. She gave me all the money she had and I rented her the suit. We made it all cute and stuff to make sure she got some good public attention for wearing it and doing a good deeds trying to fix the planet and whatnot. Made it look like a penguin, cause I think they was dying too from global warming or something and she said she really liked penguins and the public would respond to that. So once we got it done and she started using it and proving to people that it worked, she got some proper funding for it and paid off the rest. Last time I saw her, she was all excited because apparently in the last three years she brought the global temperatures back down to where they were in like the 1930s or something, which I guess is good. Why? you're telling me in your dimension you literally solved global warming with a flying penguin suit you built? I guess so. Once I got paid I didn't really pay much attention to what she was doing with it and I told her not to give me any credit because, you know, I never pay my taxes, but she seemed pretty happy with it and sounds like it's doing its job, so... Good for her, I guess. That's really something you should be more proud of. Next time you're chatting with someone new, maybe lead with that, that you solved global warming, not the gopher murdering. I don't know, I think flame shooting horse armor is more interesting story than penguin armor. Maybe tell that story before telling anyone about the gopher. Yeah, I guess you're right, that horse one is pretty cool. How did neither of you get how big a deal it is that he solved global warming? It just sounds kind of boring to say I helped the planet be a bit less hot compared to saying I turned a spaceship into a mech armor in another dimension, you know? Well, how about this one, the time I built an armor for a one-eyed cyborg bounty hunter? Oh, this sounds like interesting tale. Tell us about that next. But he literally sold... This guy had a similar sort of vibe to the horse armor guy, right? Except, when he came to me, he already had some mech armor bits to him. Like Champia, he was a cyborg. I ain't a blatant cyborg, I just got one little mechanical arm. I ain't even me whole arm. I mean, not to get into the weeds on this, but a cyborg is just someone who's got some cybernetic enhancements. So, I think he kinda is a cyborg. This thing ain't an enhancement, it's just a replacement. Doesn't do anything special. Which, as I've said before, I can fix for you. You want it to be a flamethrower, a rocket launcher, a panini maker built into it? I could do all of that. No, I don't want... Why? You could build a panini maker into me arm? I mean, that bot was kind of a joke, but yeah, of course I could. You should have seen what I did for this bounty hunter guy. That was a pretty good segue to get us back on topic, but I want to come back to that panini maker thing later. Well, hold on now, you both have me curious, what is this panini you speak of? Tells you what, after the last two stories, I'll make you both some. It'll be the best thing you ever did have. Sounds blatant good to me, but I'm gonna be hungry through these last two stories now. I would not have expected you to be this into paninis, but I'm definitely gonna log that information away for later. Anyway, this bounty hunter guy, right? He rocks up into my garage wearing this big old cowboy hat and he says, Excuse interruption, but uh, you have used this term before and I don't know if it means what I think it means. Cowboy. Is like child boy who is part cow? Like were cow? Wait a minute. You got were cows where you're from too? Honestly? 
I don't know. We have werewolves, jaguars, people who transform into frogs and dragons. Would not be totally surprised if we had werecows as well. Well, let's ju- Now, you know what? I want to get to those paninis, so let's just get through with this story. Benny, back to it. Right, so this guy who, to clarify, ain't a werecow, comes in with this big old hat covering most of his face, limping along with a cane and has a cybernetic arm and leg already. Was actually some impressive work. I asked him if my buddy Chelsea McKellen gave him those parts. She's this back alley surgeon I done worked with to help graft mech bits to people's bodies before, but this guy wasn't saying nothing about that. Or much about anything, really. He just said he needed an armor that would interface with his mech bits that he already got. He wanted it to be a roller suit, too. One that's got wheels so it can drive around, but, you know, can't fly. Wait, there are people that actually want that? Why would anyone spend a bunch of money on a mech armor that can't even fly? Right? That's what I'm saying. Some people just don't know what's good for them. Crazy bunch of goons. Stupid clowns. Anyway, he gives me some reference images and I take specs for the parts he's already got and I make him a suit that matches. Guy wore his big ol' hat the whole time, was casting a big ol' shadow over his face so I never really got the best look at him. Was a real private sort of guy. All I ever got out of him was the fact that he was a bounty hunter and he needed the suit to help protect him against some real dangerous folks he was going after for a payday. Gave the thing the sort of steampunk look he was after, you know, a bit rusty looking, spitting out smog and fumes and stuff like that. Well, that would bug me a lot more if you ain't already solved bleating global warming in your world. I'm not one to undermine myself, but you might be giving me a bit too much credit for that one. It was mostly Shima's designs that did it. But anyway, I got the suit all finished up for this guy, he took it, paid, then was on his way. He did let me first strip out his cyber hand though, made it so that it could shoot bullets out of the finger like a gun. Gave the term finger guns a whole new meaning. But then he was gone and I never heard of him again after that. Did a bit of digging to see if I could find out something about him, but nothing. But hey, the fact that he never came back to me means the suit's working just fine, so I got that going for me. Uh, to be fair, could also mean he died, though hopefully unrelated to suit. Yeah, I guess that's true, but either way, I got paid and I got to build another pretty cool looking suit. Alright, one more to wrap this up, then panini time. Oh, I mean, we could stop making them while you tell the story. This would let us get to food faster, which is what I'm assuming panini is. You still have not clarified for me. Let me talk about the mech armor first. I don't want multitasking to mess up the paninis, which, is, yeah, silly, it is food. Some of the best food, especially the way I make it. Well, I am eager to try, but also eager to hear about laced armor, so uh, who is this person you built for? Was this guy named Sid, upstanding sort of dude, and not my usual kind of clientele. He didn't want an armor for bounty hunting, or chasing monsters, or being a superhero, and nothing like that. He was a volcanologist, a dude who studies volcanoes. Oh, we have people who uh, do not study volcanoes, but worship volcanoes. But they are not very pleasant. They sometimes throw people into volcanoes as sacrifice. This man, he did not do this, correct? Nah, I, I mean, I guess I don't know for sure. Some people got some pretty weird and unexpected hobbies, you know? I don't think throwing people in volcanoes could be considered a hobby. Who knows, people got lots of weird ideas about what counts as a hobby. I mean, some people consider stamp collecting to be a hobby. I've got a blatant stamp collection. Uh, no, you don't. Yeah, alright now, I don't. I just wanted to contradict ya. I really think you and my mom would get along pretty well. Anyway, Sid wanted a mech armor that would let him go deeper into volcanoes without getting hurt, and something that would let him move around the terrain easily and tow stuff out of the volcanoes. So I built him this really tanky sort of mech. I made it able to fly, but also with these mechanical tank treads that could latch onto the feet and let him drive around too. Why would he need that if he could fly? And, you know, walk around on his own? It kinda just fit the aesthetic, you know? Didn't judge him extra for it or nothing, and he dug it, so it was wins all around. Oh, and did I mention this guy was a cyborg too? But he actually did confirm for me that he got his mech bits put in by my bud Chelsea. Uh, who is this woman again? She's a surgeon who works with cyborg enhancements. She helped me out once with this guy I built bits for. Maybe I'll talk about her some other time, or, you know, Popgrass will just forget about her and she'll never come up again. What the... What, what does that... Pop... Pop... What? 
don't worry about it. All you need to know is I built this guy a wicked suit, and he's using it to study volcanoes or whatever. Not throwing people into them, uh, hopefully, probably. And now, we can move on to some sweet paninis. Finally. Then after that, can you please finish the blatant story about the Freddy Fazbear mech armor stuff? I guess I could tell you about part two of that sometime soon. You wanna stick around for that too, Vasilia? I could probably get you caught up pretty quick. Fazbear? Wait, does this mean same thing in your world? Like Bear Dragon of Fazbian Kingdom? Terran recently brought me the hides of those dragons to make armors for myself. Oh. God, on second thought, maybe I can't handle any more ridiculous multiverse stuff today. Yeah, fair enough. Well, on that note, that wraps up today's Multiverse Tales, everybody. Thanks for watching, and feel free to get mad in the comments about the fact that in the April Fool's Day video, the channel name ain't gonna be changing to Benny Shop Studios. Like, obviously, everybody wanted. But it is gonna be a pretty weird video all the same. Who are you talking to, Benjamin? You're looking off into nowhere. Well, I'm glad someone else recognizes how weird this thing is he does. You guys are just jealous that I'm the only one who can break the fourth wall. Let's take a look at the mech armor already, shall we? I put off doing a mech armor redraw for a really long time, but I'm glad I finally did it. I mean, the art did take a little bit longer than a regular redraw, but I'd say it was definitely worth it. Thank you so much to everybody who submitted, it was really cool going through the vehicle submissions because different kinds of people were standing out this time. I'm glad I tried a different theme than the usual superheroes and monsters kind of stuff. And of course, very special thank you to the people who were selected for this episode. Emerald Dream Studios, Ved Bathina, Real Rocky Solid, Harry Cope Pryor, and Alulu774. And if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this, I recommend going back to last month's Community Redraw episode, which was taking subscriber-submitted monsters and turning them into fantasy armors. But now, of course, I have to give you the Community Redraw prompt for next month. And, you know, for this one, we are going back to superhero kind of stuff, but there's a good reason for it. Just after the next Community Redraw comes out, Doctor Strange and the Big Spooky Multiverse is going to go to theaters, so I figured we should do something that leaned into that. So for this month's Community Redraw, what I want you to do is take an existing Marvel character and redesign them into a different universe, whether into a different pop culture franchise or, in or into a different genre or anything like that. You have to draw two different poses of the character's full body and one close-up of their head. Deadline's on screen and you can submit to Discord or email, both linked in the description. Very excited to see what you all submit partially because I'm super hyped for that movie to come out. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or uplifting note. And the thought I want to leave people with today is that when your thoughts overwhelm you, remind them who's in charge. That one's a little bit spicier than usual, but I read it and I was like, ooh, that's a good one, I'm gonna use that. I hope that's helpful to someone out there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday, which definitely is not an April Fool's Day video. It's Whoever's telling you it's an April Fool's Day video, they're just straight up lying to you. It's not April Fool's, it's gonna be a regular, regular normal old video. Not April Fool's, I'll see you there, goodbye.